a, a piece of original art from a Lone Ranger. When I first saw these uh, in the early 70s, I was amazed at how large they were and how finely detailed the draftsmanship was. I remember going to a, a friend's house, uh, Jim Ivey, who was a, a comic dealer, uh, original art dealer, with Charlie Roberts and Neil Austins. We founded something called the Orlando Con in Orlando, Florida, uh, to honor these uh, great artists. But we went into to Jim Ivey's house, and he's smoking a cigar, and he's pulling out all these different pieces of art like this, and just like throwing them on the ground. Here's a Hal Foster, Prince Valiant. Here's a, X, a Secret Agent X9 by Alex Raymond, and cigar ashes are going all over it. And then his little dog comes running around on top of him, and then starts scooting across the top of him. And Jim picks it up and goes, oh, a little cigar mark on that one, it's okay though. I mean, it's like, oh but great stuff. Because of that, we started the Orlando Con about the same time that the San Diego Comic Con was uh, initiated back in, in the, uh, the early 70s. And somebody who's been a part of that, Mark Evanier, a dear friend is here. And Mark, if you could come up and, and tell us a little bit about the, uh, the original art. Uh, I should tell you a little bit more about Mark. He, he writes, produces, directs the Garfield animated series that's been going on for how many years? Uh, 18 years. 18 years. But he also uh, began his career in comics and was mentored by the great Jack King Kirby. How did that come about? In 1969, Jack came to the uh, uh, science fiction convention that they had locally here, and he met the officers of a comic book club I had. I, I was the president of the Los Angeles Comic Book Club, the largest comic book club in the world, we claim, because we didn't know of any other comic book club that was larger. <laughs> we used to meet at uh, Palms Park up near the San Diego and Santa Monica Freeway intersections. I wasn't at this convention. Our officers invited Jack to come speak at the convention, at the club. Uh, he didn't, Jack never came to the club to speak. There was only one professional who ever came to the club to speak we invited, and that was Sergio, which is how I met him. But Jack invited us down to his house. He was living down in Irvine at the time, and I met him, and six months later, I was his assistant. Doing what as an assistant? Darn near nothing. Uh, he, he, didn't, he, he was a man who, who wrote and drew and didn't need assistance. He just wanted somebody around to keep him company, and every so often, you know, do the dirty work of fixing up a piece of artwork, or, you know, here, you know, trace that over, or cut that out, or paste that up, stuff like that. It was very trivial, but I just got to know the man, and he was one of the few authentic geniuses ever in the comic book field, in any field I've ever, ever encountered, an amazing man. And he, his artwork was so dynamic, it had this great action and flow to it. Was he fast? He was very fast. He was, he was the lifetime, in his lifetime he produced more pages of comics than anyone else, which would have been impressive if they were mediocre, but every one of them was wonderful. He was just an amazingly talented artist. Uh, who's been stolen from incessantly over the years, people copying his work, and uh, he set out a whole style. He basically invented the idea of adventure comics and, and superhero comics and, and kept revolutionizing the business. You, if you go to Comic-Con and you say a bad word about him, 25 people will beat the crap out of you. It's, uh, and I'll be one of them.